I'd like to welcome everyone here to this session, An Idea and Insight with Professor Muhammad Yunus. My name is Rana Faruhar. I'm the Assistant Managing Editor of Time Magazine in charge of business and economics. And it's a real pleasure and an honor to be here with Professor Yunus today, who I've interviewed before. Um, and I know what a wonderful speaker and thinker he is. So, Professor, I'm going to let you jump in right away and describe your idea for us. And then we'll, we'll speak a little bit about how you came to it and what the conclusions are. Well, I've been uh, talking about it because of the, all the problems that we see in the economic world right now. It's emerging for many, many years, but now it came to a kind of peak. Uh, all the uh, unemployment, eurozone problem, financial crisis, energy crisis, food crisis, poverty, and all those. Uh, I, what I was trying to promote uh, or explain that the, the existing mechanism, existing structure, and the concept that we have is not going to deliver. Uh, the result that they will somehow get over all these things and a new world will emerge. In order to a uh, new world to emerge, we need a new structure, new conceptual framework so that we can get it done. Uh, one of the suggestions I'm making, the basic problem that I see within the system, uh, overwhelming uh, uh, concentration on making money. Mm. Everything that we do in the business world is focused on making money. That's mm. what the indica indicator that you uh, try to assess how successful we are. In the business world, there's nothing else. Mm. So that kind of squeezed out all kinds of social orientation of human life and human activity. Uh, and that's not a tenable situation. Mm. And that untenable situation is created by the structure that we have. I said business doesn't have to be always money-centered, always self-centered, always or many times obsessed with money. Because human beings is not, are not always about money. Human beings is much bigger than just money-making machine. We are not robots. We are human beings. Mm. We take care of ourselves individually. At the same time, we take care of everybody else. Mm. We take care of the planet itself. And business world doesn't have that orientation So, at the moment. We can do that. We can create a different kind of business which is not money-centered, which is a solution-centered, uh, which is a business, but is a business to solve problems in a, uh, in a way sustainable way so that the money can remain within the system and continue. The comp the, we, I'm, I'm calling it social business. Social business is about sol solution of the problems. And it, it runs uh, as a business, but the profit stays with the company, no dividend. So it's a non-loss, non-dividend company. Uh, to solve social problems. And uh, young people like it because young, young people don't want to inherit this creaky uh, sex structure. It's a crumbling structure. That's not a good start for young people. They want to build their own. And that's what young people comes in the picture. And they're a very powerful generation. Mm -hmm. This is the most powerful generation ever had mm -hmm. in the human history because of the technology in their command. A seven-year-old has much more technological power than a 60-year-old today, mm -hmm. right now. Uh, so that's the power he or she grows with, mm. and uh, enormous speed, enormous way to do things, and he wants to, he wants to do things for uh, for the world, mm. and let's use that power to make that changes. So this is the time to address that issue. Tell us if you can, if you can define precisely a little bit more what you mean about social business, and how is a social business different than these things? How is it different from a well-run NGO? Well, uh, NGO, by definition, is a not-for-profit uh, enterprise. Uh, when we talk about social enterprise, it's an enterprise which also makes money, dividends, and so on. Mm. Uh, it's orientation towards social goals. Uh, so we have no quarrel with any of this concept. Mm. But we are trying to position a different piece of uh, concept. This is a concept where it's a non-dividend company. Mm. That's the distinction between social enterprise and social business. Social enterprise could provide dividend to the owners. Uh, there's no bar to it. But within social business, there's absolute bar. That this is totally 100% focused on sol solving problems. And all profits go back. All profit goes to back the to business. the company because <laughs> we create, or as an investor, as a produce, uh, pr promoter, I create this to solve problems, not for making money. Tell me a little bit about how you think the current system came to be broken, because it seems like that's an important thing in informing what social business should be doing. Uh, all the crisis, some of the crisis came. Uh, with obsession uh, with money. We think making money is the purpose of the life. Purpose of life is not making money. Mm. Purpose of life is to make oneself happy and the rest of the world happy. Mm. Uh, but that purpose is forgotten. So we have to re reinvent the purpose. What is the purpose of our life? That's what the young people are looking for. Mm. Human life is about creativity, about doing things so that it, be it becomes a legacy. You re be build a legacy for yourself. Uh, that's not what we do in business. Mm. We, in business, we have a, a big stack of cash 
And that's why I want to say goodbye. We have the capacity to change that thing. Nobody should be unemployed. Nobody should be poor. For the same reason, we are capable. No, nobody should be welfare dependent. Are you getting a lot more interest in these last few months and over the last year um, as there's been such a growing debate about the role of business? You know, what should business do in society? Should it be just for profit making? The Occupy movement, all of these things we've been reading in the news. Is that a turning point, do you think? And it's are you getting important. a lot more queries uh, it's, now? It's or? very important. Like, uh, look at the Occupy movement. Mm. Uh, it's a frustration. It's anger. People mm. are angry. What are you doing with us? Why should I be unemployed? Uh, in some countries uh, in Europe, unemployment among the youth is as high as 46 uh, percent, 47 percent. Uh, it's a shameful thing to happen. Why the young people should go out of jobs? They are capable, they want to do things, contribute, add to the society, and that is a cutoff. So this is a kind of a, a, a totally unacceptable proposition for a young person to remain unutilized uh, with all the creative capacity. Unlike, for example, 50 years back of unemployed youth, today's unemployed youth, uh, you are denying that capacity hundred times much more capacity than we did before. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow it will be much more capacity that we'll reject it. So we have to redesign. Like we said there's, there's a kind of invisible hand, we'll take care of it. You are wrong. We take care of ourselves, not the invisible hand. We decide where we want to go. We design how we want to live and we'll make it happen. So listen up, Adam Smith. Yes. <laughs> um, well, all right, we've heard about the idea. So let's move on to the insights uh, section of this discussion. Tell us, you know, for people who would like to get involved with a social business or for companies, multinationals or, or small entrepreneurs that would like to create one, what's the roadmap? What are the steps that you see? Uh, very simple. Uh, they can invite us. We can explain if they're looking for ideas. Uh, we can help them design. And many already have designed. We, uh, every year we hold a social business summit bring all the CEOs, all the universities, their students, business designers together, discuss it for over three days and have a special session for the young people, a special day for the young people. Uh, this is one forum where we can discuss and all the people who are already doing social business, they bring their merchandise, show how they do it, how they market it, what benefit it generates. So this, every company has a core expertise. So how do you use your core expertise to solve problems? Mm. They have enormous capacity, enormous creative ca capacity inside of the uh, company. But this is all used for making money. They never thought this can be used for solving problems. So we are saying this is it. So what would you say to critics who say, okay, this is all great, but in a way it's letting the state off the hook, that these are services, you know, delivering, delivering water, providing nutrition, these are things that the state should be addressing, and that it's a concern if multinational companies do that, whether or not it's helping people or not. What would you say to that? Uh, government is not different from the citizens. Citizens make a kind of institution so that on their behalf they can take care of certain common things. So it's not a question of we dump everything on the shoulder of the government and say, oh, we let's, let's go busy ourselves with making money. That's not a good solution because individuals have much more capacity, creativity, unutilized for social uh, solutions. So citizens should not be sitting on their hands and let government do things. Uh, citizens can do together with government and government is a supportive role, provide uh, framework for legal framework, regulatory framework so that all the citizens can express their ability and potential in a meaningful way to solve the problem so that the whole nation or the whole country becomes much better in terms of solving the issues of social nature and other uh, kinds of things, environmental issues. In general, would you like to see the private sector taking on more of these problems? Uh, I'm saying every citizen can do that. Uh, when you say talk about individuals, that's private sector, that's not government. Mm. So there are some overlap between the government and the civil, uh, civil society sector. Uh, I'm not using the word private sector because mm. private sector indicates money-making sector. Mm -hmm. So I was very careful on that. I call it citizen sector. Citizen sector can do that and citizen sector includes the private sector too. They are not different people. Mm. As an individual, as a CEO, is an individual too. He lives in this country or in this planet. He has a responsibility she has a responsibility and why don't you use that responsibility together? Mm. You have the machine, the company, and that machine can be used to solve these problems. Where do you see the most innovation coming from geographically, for example, in terms of social business? Do you see ideas coming from developing countries um, because the need is greater? Or I, are there different ways of implementing this? In, I would in put it this way. I would say the more desperate you are, more likely that you will come up with those ideas. Mm. Uh, because you're in a desperate situation. If you're not desperate, you're not using your mind in that direction. So desperate situations are in poor countries, 
in Asia, in Africa, in Latin America, because they are desperate. So they are young people when they become educated because they are not globally connected young people. They are not the old kind of letter writing, pen pals and so on and so forth. <laughs> There are uh, text messaging and uh, Facebooks and everything else that is coming. And God knows what is coming tomorrow. Well, much faster, much easier and so on. So they will be using the technology power to address this problem. And then we need the support who have the expertise sitting around and utilized in that direction. Going back to your own history, microfinance is obviously a great idea that came out of a developing country. What lessons have you learned from microfinance that could be applied to social business? And also looking at some of the challenges that microfinance has faced, what are the pitfalls and, and, and what lessons could be learned? One way I would say when we did the microfinance, uh, we kind of defied the system. Sometimes I explained what is microfinance. I said, uh, I just look at the conventional banks, how they do it. Once I learn how they do it, I do the opposite. <laughs> and, it, <laughs> and it became microfinance. It's very easy. When it comes to business, the business world is a money-making business. We said, let's delink with profit, delink with dividend. We created social business. So we reversed the system. What this new model tells us about the, the path ahead and, and how to fix capitalism, which is sort of the big, the big question, how do you think that social business can fix the problems in the current system? Why don't we design a system which will take us to the place that we want to go? A place where there will be no unemployment, a place where there will be no poverty, a place where there will be no debt, unnecessary debt, a place where the uh, planet will be safe. After we put what is our requirement, what is our destination, then we work backwards how to get there. Mm. That's what the system is to be. So it's fixing this one will, uh, will waste of time for a while, uh, then crash again. Uh, so this is not going to take us uh, very far. The distance between possibles and impossibles is shrinking. Very soon, very few items left which you can call impossible. Why don't we make that list of impossible and make it possible today? Because we have the author, uh, power to do that. You touched on something important about short-term thinking versus long-term thinking, and that's a big topic in business right now. How do we create more long-term thinking? How can social business help with that? Every business can have a parallel business called social business. Mm. It will improve their own performance. It will improve the morale of their own employees. Excitement that, yes, we not only make money, we change the life, quality of life of these people because we have it. We can do that. What questions should businesses that want to create a social enterprise within their companies or beside their companies ask themselves about what kind of mission they should be addressing? Where should they be putting their efforts? One of the things they can discuss, uh, what are the problems of the world? Can we do something about any one of them in a tiny little way? Social business doesn't have to be a big mega business. It could be tiny little business. <laughs> so every business had that core expertise to address themselves. What is that we can do? Can we reduce the problem of unemployment? Every business can create business to reduce unemployment. Not for making money by doing that, but simply saying that we want to create this company to employ 20 people so that they have decent living for themselves. We are not asking for dividend out of this company. All we want to let it run by itself so that I don't have to dish out money every year. Uh, every company can come up with beautiful ideas one after another and the excitement of doing that will touch everybody. Thank you for, for, for being here. Thank you all for joining us. Thank and uh, we're going to close the session now. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.